tackle these two questions together because I think they can be linked. Um, on the one hand, um, how do we how do we inject more um, scope for popular participation into the EU project? And uh, my presentation at this forum uh, related to different ways in which uh, direct democracy can be configured in, um, in a political system such as the European Union. And by direct democracy, I'm essentially referring to uh, two main instruments. One is the referendum and the other is the citizens initiative. Now it's important to know that the citizens initiative already exists at the European Union level. It was introduced by the, um, by the Lisbon Treaty, so we already have at what is something like equivalent to the federal level in the European Union at the highest level, a mechanism of direct democracy um, that has been installed. The other typical uh, mechanism of direct democracy, the referendum, um, is also instituted in uh, multi-level polities, uh, such as the European Union, typically federal systems. And the European Union does not have an instrument of federal-like level direct democracy presently. There is no such thing as an EU referendum. What do exist are referendums at the, uh, sub, at the member state level on EU level um, issues. So one idea that has been discussed by people is uh, the idea of instituting a, a European level referendum, a sort of pan-EU referendum, on what would be the equivalent of constitutional change. So that would be, um, instead of the kind of uh, unilateral referendums that are presently um, used to decide upon matters of uh, treaty change, to institute a European-wide referendum. Um, that would certainly be interesting, and certainly it might even uh, generate much more turnout than European elections, which are, you know, uh, typically have um, low levels, and, uh, are, and that, those levels of turnout are actually falling. So a referendum for some people would be uh, one way of um, boosting uh, interest and participation in European Union affairs on a matter that actually matters, which would be in this case some uh, major treaty change. So uh, the point I want to underscore here is that dealing with direct democracy in a polity such as the European Union, um, in what I would call a multi-tiered polity, is something that the European Union has to deal with presently the practice of direct democracy, especially those referendums on treaty change, are quite undemocratic and uh, unilateral. Uh, that provides the case for a European referendum. But there are also other referendums, such as those that take place in the regions. Uh, one just took place recently in Scotland on secession from, uh, from the UK. Now, such a move would, of course, have implications for the European Union, because one would expect that Scotland would be a member of the European Union should it had if it had voted in favor of independence. Now, this poses a problem for the European Union because how do you deal with these uh, sort of uh, internal problems within the member state that would have, because you've got to add another member state to the European Union, how is that going to be negotiated? And it would be quite conflictual. And this is something that um, we have to uh, have some clarity on because uh, the next scheduled uh, referendum on on uh, independence, and this might not be a legal one um, if the Spanish government doesn't allow it, would be uh, the uh, referendum that is, or the popular consultation that is uh, scheduled for, um, for Catalonia. So um, the EU has to confront its direct democratic dilemma. We don't know which model will emerge out of this negotiation, but it's certainly one way in which we could uh, basically boost participation or interest in European matters.